All right, it's on. Okay. So first, um, you know, what were you wondering about the lesson or how do you feel about the lesson? Um, okay, I know I have different level groups, like, but now that I started working with them more, I feel like my little group just don't know how to blend their work. Right. And so even when we started, like, um, we got this story with you, but, like, we just lived with that <laughs> but um, the story of the bobcat on the thing? Yes. No. Okay, so I was doing that with them today, and I don't know. I don't Look, know how to. Um, you think I'll call. Yeah, I with them? Yeah, like, so do I read it first? You can. That is a strategy. So a strategy could be that you know you have them follow along as you read, and you're modeling you know, good fluency for them. And it says, you know, it is sunset on the tip top of the hill. Now let's pound that. It is sunset on the tip top of the hill. The reason why I'm pounding is that tells me my syllables. So every word here is one syllable except for these two words. And that helps them with the cadence. And then I would be like, let's all read that together. It is sunset on the tip top of the hill. So you might have them read through, you might read it through the first time to introduce and to, you know, follow those skills, but it is decodable, and that's, this is for our lower group, so mm -hmm. it is decodable, so at some point we want them to be, it's okay if it's a little bit of a struggle, because everything here, if I'm sounding it out, it, it, is, a, mm, it, you know what I mean, like if I sound it out, that is, but um, we don't want it to be all, like if it's way too hard for them, and, but it's not, I don't think that it is. Like, I, and I know this Jada. I actually know she was really quick, but I kind of don't want to move her out of this group, right? Um, because I know she's still missing a couple of letter sounds. And um, but even when like, so I told them. So I I started going in with them, and I wanted to read it, but then I wanted to see what they would do. Absolutely. So I had them just to you know to say, oh, I can't read. I said, sound out the first letter, and then once they sounded out, they got it. And so um, I'm just wondering how do I progress through that because I don't want to, I don't want to work harder than they are. I Absolutely, yes, I agree. Yeah. I do agree with that. So um, I would say for that, I would give them like let's. I would say okay, let's look at this first sentence and let's just look at that first sentence. I would have them in their brains try to read it to themselves first, okay. and then say, okay, now we're going to come together, because it sounds like they don't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. They have the sounds, other than a few sounds, mm -hmm. a few, like the X was a little but rough, most, but most, of, the most of the sounds, they're, they're there. So they really can't, so part of it is just having them understand they are readers, and, you know, like you said, so I might, I might even read some of it and be like, okay, this is your guys' sentence, and then they all have to read it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But give them some, just so it doesn't take, because if... If they're very halted in their reading, it could take the entire 20 minutes to get to this, and that's not, you know, no, the only no. thing you're covering. Mm -hmm. So you might want to try to, you know, do some things and then be like, oh, see this, purr, grr, purr. That's really just making noise. That's a sound. They're spelling out the sounds there. That's not real words, you know, kind of pointing that out. But um, I might make them, you know, read some of these. And even if you get to this, you can say, what was that, Jack thinks? Well, what and was and that, those are all red words. Look at the, you know, out of this sentence, there's five words and three of them are red words. That's why red words are so important. You know, just kind of bringing their attention to that. Okay. But, um, but yeah, there's many ways. You don't want, the one thing you don't want to do is they don't want to do round robin to where it's like, you read a sentence, you read a sentence, you read a sentence, you know, like, because the only person reading at that time is that person. Mm -hmm. Now, that also can happen if you're reading it first, but you, it, you know, like the thing is, is like the accountability piece is if you read it first, they have to then come back and read it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that you do. Today right. So you want to have that choral reading. You could also, I've seen people do it where um, each person <laughs> whisper reads to themselves. And then when you come in and you, like, it's better when it wasn't COVID time, but you could tap right in front of them, and then they go, it is sunset on the tip top of the hill. And you might listen to one or two sentences, and then you go to the next kid. And then they go, you have to train them and say, okay, when I tap, you're going to come off of quiet read, and you're going to read out loud so I can hear you. When I move, you're going to go back to quiet mode, and I'm going to tap somebody else to read to me. And here's the thing. 
If I tap over here, this little baby might not be right here. She might be right here, and she just starts reading to you wherever she's at. She might be in the middle of a sentence. She just starts reading to you wherever she's at. But that does take training them to do that because they're automatically going to want to go back to wherever the person that just finished because they're trained like that. You okay. know what I mean? So that's just something that you're going to say. You're not going to be, I don't expect you to be all reading at the same pace because when we're reading to ourselves, we don't have to all read at the same pace. So when I tap you, tap on you, you just come on, you put your voice on, and you read wherever you were. You could be back here, you could be over here. You don't have to start the sentence over, you just start reading where you were out loud for me. Okay. And then when I go to the next person, you go back to, um, your voice goes off, and I go to the next person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that, that could really help. Um, I did notice that if they're having trouble blending, because it looked like when you were on the blending board, they were fine with that. Mm -hmm. So um, it could be some of these, um, the um, compound words. And since you're doing the open um, and closed syllables with the multisyllabic words, um, you might possibly put take some of the words out of the, um, I wouldn't do all of it because you want to see how they're able to put those skills together. Okay. But, excuse me, I might take like zigzag, laptop, and hilltop. But I would leave some of those so they have to figure some of it out. Okay. And I would tell them, remember, we're going to be doing compound words, um, but here's some examples to get our minds ready for it, how we, how we attack those words. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're not giving... No, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I might... Do you have a... Here we go. So I'm not going to take all of those words because I want them to have to apply some skills. Okay, let me see. Um, and okay, so if I were going to um, introduce these, I'm going to say um, we're going to read the Bobcat on the Hilltop and have everybody repeat that, that title for you. And then say, you know, what I notice about Bobcat and Hilltop is their compound words. Our story is going to have a lot of compound words. And I know that they're bigger words, but we can still apply the same school skills of sounding out the word. Here's a couple to try them. And I might cover it and do like this. So they just focus on that. And say, p op t op hop top. Now, they, if they're in your lower group, the blending, they might need to go p op pop t op. Top, put those together. Pop, top makes pop top. I don't know about that because I noticed when we were do, when we tried to do the dictation, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it wasn't. I don't know how to do that. I don't okay, know. okay. So if this were your dictation word, you would say pop top. Say the word pop top. Pop top. Let's pound it. Pop top. And because it's two syllables, it would be two um, pounds. First syllable, pop, tap it, p, op, write it. Second syllable, top, pound it or tap it, t, op, write it. And then they write it. And it's going to take, I mean, some of these kids have seen it and stuff. Like I said, you guys have a lot of virtual kids, so they might not be familiar with it. They but have, she, ha okay, so, like, she has a sound, mm, add, and I saw said write it. When I could, I would say she would not that she couldn't, she wouldn't write it. So I was like, I didn't, I, I didn't know what to do. Um, so I gave her some more time, and then you know, then we, you know, covered the word and stuff, and then uh, she rewrote it correctly. But I was confused because I was like, you sounded it out, you know, the letters. Right. I didn't understand why she didn't. Does she know how to form her letters? Mm-hmm. Okay, so she has letter formation, she has the sounds, but she wasn't... Well, she may not know how to form all her letters. So it could be because when we think about COVID, how it is affecting some of these students, half of their kindergarten year and half of their first grade year, or most of their first grade year, was spent virtual. Okay. So letter formation could be very weak. And that's where when we're working in the sand, working on those letters to make sure that they know how to form them. Because she might have all the sounds, but she might not truly know, oh, that's an M, that's an A, that's a D, and be able to form all of those. Um, so we have to figure that out first. Can she form those letters? 
The second thing we have to think of is, is it defiance or is it confidence? confidence? Because if it's confidence, we say, remember, this isn't a spelling test. I haven't given you these words to study. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. I'm, we're going to check it and see where we can correct. So this is just your best shot. You know, like, we just want to see how you can apply these skills. Um, and that might help bring her out, you know, because, you know, so often students want to please us and they want to have the right answer. Nobody intentionally raises their hand with the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. So that confidence, you know, and just really over celebrate ever. You have all the sounds. You're halfway there. You know, what letter makes the mm sound? You know, you don't want to have to keep feeding every letter and every word that way because she's going into second grade. Mm -hmm. So she needs to be a little bit more independent. But we also have to think our second grade students, they're, they miss, they miss so much of those foundational skills in kinder and in first grade. Um, so I might then do the same thing with the word attack, how we can cover this and we can sound this part, then sound that and put it together. Um, we do that with a couple of the words. And then, like I said, be like, there's going to be more. These are some of the words from the story. There's going to be more like that. So when we get there, what is our, what is our strategy? We're going to sound e you know, each part and then we're going to put it all back together. Um, you know, just to kind of to remind them. And when you get to it, the third word, okay, that's a compound word. What's our strategy? All right, let's try it, and we all sound it out together, and we all put it back together. Okay. Does that kind of? That makes sense. Okay, good. All right. Um, I I noticed that on the Wednesday surprise, um, you know, we wanted them to be able to identify the character and the setting. Um, who are the students that you were like they nailed it? Like you just know that they've got it. Um. Elijah, Jalen. Jacelyn? Caitlin. Caitlin. I always call her Jacelyn. Yeah. I know for sure they got it. And I want to say Don Trell, too. Um, the one thing I noticed about Don Trell is he kept saying it was Grandpa, too. Mm -hmm.